What's up everybody? Today we have ourselves kind of an odd mix of things that we're gonna do. It's a little bit of tree work, a little bit of construction type landscaping type stuff. Just so worked out that I was able to offer the customer both of those uh, skill sets. So we're gonna dive right into it. It's kind of a unique job, I think. So this backyard over here has got some drainage issues. Probably could be solved with grading, but grading would be much more invasive and require a new lawn installation and be much more costly than throwing some drainage pipe in with some catch basins and so we're gonna do exactly that. This whole property slopes down to this corner right here and just on the outside of the fence here is a drainage basin. And you might say, well, what do you mean there's a drainage basin there? Cause there ain't no drainage basin there, but there is, it's just all the way down in here. And you can just see two, two holes right there of the grate. So somewhere along the way when they developed this area, this basin got buried and somebody straight up planted a tree on top of it. <laughs> so we're gonna start by removing this tree and we're gonna dig out the stump, dig up the basin. Then we've gotta cut a hole in the basin to put our pipe in and that'll give us a, a, a point to drain all the water to from this property. It's kind of a little bit of everything all mixed in one. First thing we gotta do is get this tree down. This tree is really almost hardly worth the climb, but it's just tall enough and there's this nice PVC fence here and some other nice landscaping trees and whatnot. That's just not worth risking it. There's branches that's tangled in and everything up there. So we'll just climb it quick, toss everything down. It's not a big deal. Probably gonna do about half of it with the hand saw anyway. If you're a faithful viewer of the channel, you might have caught onto this, but if you're new to it, you might not know. Tree work isn't really my full-time gig anymore. I still contract climb for a, a few different companies. You know, some folks I really like to work with and that kind of thing. Um, just enough to kind of, kind of keep me good at it. You know, because if you don't do it at all, you'll get, you, you know, use it or lose it kind of a thing. Those skills kind of start to disappear and they get replaced with other skills if you're not using them. And uh, so anyhow, that's how I got this project. Got this work is I'm, most of my work is excavating and construction now. So... I still keep the stuff around, but I don't have like a chipper, and so we're just loading this into the back of the dump truck over there and hauling it to the nearest mulch manufacturer. Still getting my construction business set up. I just updated the truck. Uh, if there hasn't already been a video about that, there will be, I think. Uh, did some work to it. So I'm just I'm getting farther away from Tuesday, and eventually, someday I won't do any more, or I'll do very little. It'll just be like a friends and family kind of thing, but. For now, I can still afford to do it. I don't have any full-time employees, so I can kind of do what I want when I want to and when the work comes in. It's kind of a nice blend of things, honestly, because some days I go to work and I'm just another just another helper on a job, and some days I go to work and I've got the full responsibility of getting everything completed. And uh, I really like that. It gives you a break and doesn't wear you out, but also gives me the opportunity to earn a little more and maintain some responsibility over some things. The unfortunate thing is I'm not quite set up for tree work like I used to be. I used to have, you know, the trucks all set up and everything. And so like, for example, today, I just forgot to put a rake on the truck. And how do you do good tree work without a rake? <laughs> but we'll get it done here. This isn't gonna be a huge mess, so. I think pine trees are my least favorite thing to climb. They're sticky, they're boring, are the same thing every single time. If you do have to do a lot of rigging that gets really old really fast, there's a million branches. I don't know. Obviously work is work and you gotta do what you gotta do though. Something I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about is observing the three parts of tree climbing. There's the climbing and how to get up there and how to get around in the tree. There's the rigging and how to make stuff go where you want to and how to rig big pieces without breaking the tree and that kind of thing there's also how to free fall stuff and make big pieces fall into tiny spaces and have good cuts and know your species about what can do what and what you can get a good hinge out of and not and i find that most of the tree climbers i talk to have a favorite of those three and that's typically what they're best at. It doesn't mean they're bad at the other ones. 
but for me for example my favorite is rigging i love getting huge pieces on the ground without hitting an obstacle like that that's my favorite part you know i i would say climbing's a second and free falling stuff is a third i don't like taking big risks and that's why i like rigging because when i tie a rope on it i know exactly what's going to happen i'm not not hoping that the wind doesn't blow it i'm not counting on anything but except factors that i can pretty closely control and so i'd say that's where most of my skills are i can still get around in a tree pretty all right i don't have a ton of practice prune climbing and that's where the real climbing is when you're climbing without spikes but anyhow i just thought that's an interesting thing and i haven't heard anybody talk about it and if you have any thoughts on it by all means i'd be happy to hear them Folks might ask or wonder why I'm using a handsaw to cut this big of a chunk off when I got the, hand, the chainsaw right here. And it's just because I prefer not to use my chainsaw with one hand. I mean, you could right here, but it's not really necessary. And it just takes a little more, a little more effort to use the handsaw. And frankly, not that much more time. And it's a bajillion times safer. Now that I got the other stem out of there, you can see there's that hole right there and it's right in line with that fence. And that's the way they found this basin was the fence guy was coming in here to put this fence straight back to the wood fence. But when he dug a post hole here, he found that basin. So it worked out really well because we would have been having to go through all sorts of other work to get the water to drain off this backyard if that wasn't so easily accessible right there. Well, I'm working my way up this tree here and we're getting close to the top. I start looking for a spot to put the top into and I don't have one. So I guess we're gonna have to climb until we got a small enough top to grab and throw out of here, which is always a little bit interesting on white pine because it's not real, real strong material. But that's okay, we'll be careful. We'll get it done safely. Safe work is slow work, but slow work isn't necessarily safe work. I really probably could have avoided climbing this high by trimming that other tree and opening up a spot big enough to drop, you know, the top third of this tree into out in the yard there. But I really want to keep this kind of as full as possible, even though we got to take this tree out. This is a privacy barrier between an industrial area over that way and the residential area over here. And so I just want to try and maintain as much as possible. I know from previous experiences that I can get away with this. Doesn't mean it's a good idea, doesn't mean it's a zero risk idea, but I'm pretty confident in it. Kind of thankful that extra cone weights on these branches to help get these things all the way down to those limbs below me. Okay. Alright, that's the last of the limbs. Yeehaw. Man, I don't I don't mind waving around in trees much, but <laughs> being up in this noodle does make me a little nervous. Some might even say that I could have left some branches on to help kind of, you know, keep the tree from moving around so much, but in reality I got enough obstacles for throwing stuff down. And it slows down the whole process of moving a rope around in a tree, but I didn't think I'd care that much about how quiet an electric saw is, but I started using this one, it makes makes things real nice sometimes. Like this job, you know, we don't have a chipper here, nothing like that. We're in a couple backyards, and you know, a chainsaw would be the loudest thing we were using if we were using it. It's not like it's a big deal, but when you're up on something really noodly up at the top, it's kind of nice to not have to do any real sudden and abrupt movements like starting a chainsaw. Bingo. 
Looks like the first piece I can actually cut and tip out of here is going to be the last piece we cut anyway. Perfect. Alright, I guess I'll give myself a little something to grab onto with the machine, so we'll cut it right in here. Should be able to just push it over. Wow, big tree. Yeah, turf damage, okay, <laughs> my goodness. I'm gonna go grab the machine, we'll dig this thing out and then we'll haul this tree off to the mulch yard. All right, we got the machine up in here now and we're backing the truck back up in. Go ahead and rip this thing out. exposed uh, looking down in here we can just barely see the bottom all the way down there you can see it's a big manhole there's some rungs for a ladder and stuff it's a long way down there. there's a nice cool breeze coming up out of here doesn't exactly smell the best but it doesn't smell like sanitary sewer either it's just storm sewer so we're gonna go ahead and dig down beside it so we can put our pipe into the side of it have it you can see right here is the edge of the basin or the, at least the edge of the lid dug down a little deeper and we'll stick our pipe right in there we'll use a core saw or a core drill I should say look at my hand just filthy from all that pine sap we'll poke our hole in there run our pipe in and mortar it up so that way it's nice and solid and secure I think I'm gonna dig out our trench underneath this fence though before we put the pipe in because it's gonna be a pain to dig this if there's a pipe in the way down there well we decided we're gonna yank on this grate and see if we can get off with the chain just because we need access to the inside to help mortar that pipe. So we're going to start and see if that's going to be a problem for us. Sorry about the noise. Some guy started running a jackhammer just a property over. <laughs> you 
got it. I did the trick. Well, thankfully that popped off with a little bit of effort. It came a lot harder than I thought it would, but it came out. Uh, that'll give us good access to make sure we mortar our pipe in real good from the inside and the outside. Next step here is going to be to take the excavator into the inside of the fence, reach over the fence, and dig ourselves a trench to get our first pipe in. That looks much better. Well, we got our trench dug under here, all nice, through the fence and everything. Didn't hurt the fence, might have touched it, but didn't hurt it. Got a, enough dug there for a whole piece of pipe, so we'll go ahead and get to coring our hole in the side of this basin. six inches <laughs> looky there that's that's almost a solid eight or nine inches there I was hoping for like six but that's a lot more <laughs> that's why it took so long all right go ahead and stuff that pipe to me if you can Be good go ahead and mortar that in There we go. That looks like that'll do the job. We're gonna let that set up a little bit. We'll throw some dirt on this pipe and then we will be done for today. We'll be set up good to run some pipe tomorrow and uh, it'll be a good project. If you're ever curious, the reason these things are round is because round is the only shape that can't fall in through itself. No matter how I drop this, it can't turn a certain way and make it through like if it were a square or a triangle or even an octagon. Well, here we go, folks. This is the end of this part for us. We got that all tied in, got it backfilled, got it bowled out real nice. It's actually gonna catch water that I think runs right into the fence here because this backyard is sloped a little bit this way for part of the backyard. And obviously this is sloped this way. So that'll open up a whole new place for water to get caught. Uh, we also made sure not to burn this up. So should any water get puddle in here, which I don't expect it will, but this is ready to go to catch it if it does. I'm pretty sure this yard overall gently slopes away from the fence. Sometimes your eyes can play tricks on you too and I'm not getting a laser out to find out because ultimately this whole area should be graded a little bit better but we've got so many fixed things here that won't allow us to change the grade. Like we can't change the grade much around this tree. We've got those trees, we've got this fence, we've got that fence. So we just gotta make it as nice as we can within this small area. But it's, on, it's honestly not too bad. We got our pipe backfilled on this side of the fence and then I've got it left open with a bucket over the end of the pipe over there, so that way we can pick up there and rock and roll tomorrow. We've got the, the excavator there, we've got the skid loader over there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I think it's gotten plenty long enough, so I might film the other half, and you let me know in the comments if you want to see it. And if it's something you're interested in, I'll post it up too. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and we'll catch you on the next one.